What is up, guys? Ultra Ball's back with another SPL game. I'm bringing you an NU game this time between ICT and Eternally. Uh, yeah, NU, if you guys watch some other narrations, my favorite tier to play other than OU, or what I play the most. I love this tier, so it'll be interesting to see two good players. Uh, yeah, we'll look at the teams quickly uh, before they pick their leads. So, um, ICT's team, I'm assuming that uh, the... The Aselgor will be either like Specs or Life Orb, just because it probably won't be lead on a team like this, which isn't like definitely not HO. It's more of like a bulky offense sort of team with the uh, Steelix, Slow King sort of defensive backbone. So I'm assuming it'd just be some sort of Life Orb Aselgor, which would lead me to believe it's either Scarf uh, Embor or Scarf Vanillix. Most likely Scarf Vanillix because that would open up the Z move to be on Embor, which usually like Embor with Z move has like no counters, it's busted. Uh, on Eternally side, uh, I'd assume that the Incineroar is probably going to be offensive. Like the main set in Sun Moon was Assault Vest, but uh, now with Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, it has a lot of it has some more move tutors, and the offensive sets have become a lot scarier. It's got stuff like Knockoff now, which you could use if you want to. Um, I think Bulk Up. I don't know if it had that. Like, I don't remember exactly what it had before, but the offensive sets are a lot scarier now. In, in addition to that, he has a Togeta Maru to deal with Whimsicott, so he doesn't need the uh, Incineroar to be Assault Vest. Like, the Incineroar will st would still be able to check stuff like Delphox regardless, uh, but now, like, because he has the Togeta Maru for Whimsicott, I'm assuming that the Incineroar is going to be more offensive. Uh, probably a Scarf Haunter, maybe like a Life Orb, uh, Croak, obviously rocks on Toad. Um, so thinking about it, uh, it looks like ICT doesn't have much for uh, Whimsicott. That looks like it could be a huge problem here. Um, even though I'm sure, like, if it, like, Slow King could always pivot in on it because if it's a Salt Vest, it's gonna, even though, like, even if it goes for, like, an Energy Ball, it's still gonna, like, slurp that up for breakfast. But still, like, the, in general, like, the Haunter and the Whimsicott both look like problems because uh, ICT also doesn't have a Ghost Resist, so. Uh, the Vanillix leads off against the Incineroar. Obviously here, ICT is going to want to switch no matter what, because even like HP Ground is not doing enough to Incineroar to stay in. Um, so ICT will probably go uh, into... He doesn't have good switch-ins to this at all. Like, I guess you could go Embor, but uh, health on Embor is kind of nice. Uh, he pivots into Slow King first, takes a Flare Blitz. Um, yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, I mean, I guess fl uh, Flare Blitz was free because it would have done more damage to the Embor if you wanted to go into it. We see Malicious Moonsault uh, dead. Oh, no, it's... Oh, crits, crits through Cobra. That sucks. I, I don't know if that would have mattered regardless because Incineroar is strong, and that's a that's a powerful-ass move. So I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure if that mattered. I'm surprised ICT stayed in, though, on that. I guess... Well, he stayed in because he was Cobra, of course. And I guess you're not... <coughs> sorry about that. I guess you're not assuming, like, Z, and if it would, if you would have just Darkest Lariated, you could have just, like, Scalded him or something like that, so that does kind of suck. Uh, he goes into Embor now, though, and uh, Eternally has no switch into Embor whatsoever. Uh, if, if ICT... ICT will probably superpower and play it safe, or he goes for Z... Z superpower, all up pumping, it's gonna destroy Toad. That did so much. And now it's actually in range of the next superpower. Um, and I guess they're in, in uh, Estor's chat, they're debating if that mattered, um, so I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see if they say anything about that. I mean, it's it still would have, like, even with the berry, it's still a neutral Z move. 180 bi base power coming off of, like, a good attack stat, so I don't know if that would have even mattered. Um, I guess it would depend on the investment of the Slow King, probably. But yeah, ICT here uh, just destroyed the Seismitoad. Uh, if I'm Eternally, I'd probably sack this, because ICT uh, could, like, could flare blitz and um anything that eternally would want to switch into superpower will die in one to flare blitz so uh it's definitely risky to try and pivot into something else but uh yeah, we'll see if he does like uh, if if he was going to risk something it'd be croak yeah croak and he does just superpower um ict could have played played a risky there in flare blitz i don't think it was necessary but i guess yeah like if i was eternally i don't know if i would have been if i would have been able to make that play just because i felt like flare blitz was Definitely an option that ICT could have gone for there. But now, obviously, uh, ICT is going to switch out here at minus one defense. He goes into a Cell Gore, which has, I think, like 40 defense. <laughs> it's like Cartana level bad uh, defense. And it actually is going to get uh, to a KO'd by Drain Punch. Um, but Eternally might not want to stay in and take a Specs, whatever, or a Life Orb, whatever. But he just uh, stays in and kills the Cell Gore. Uh, ICT gets up one spike, but I don't think that's going to matter too much. Uh, if Eternally does have a hazard control, it would be Defog Whimsicott, um, which I'm not sure if it is or not. I, I mean, we'll see, I guess. Uh, if he only... If 
uh, ICT gets rocks up with the licks, then I'm assuming Eternally will want to defog. Otherwise, the one spike isn't the worst thing in the world. And if you get the... Now with Slow King dead, if you get the Whimsicott in, in you probably just want to like click Moonblast anyway. Um, especially if you're Specs. The ICT now is probably going to go into... Um, he could go into Vanillux here. I'm sure Blizzard probably kills. Uh, or he could go... Like, you could go into Lix and, and click Earthquake because Drain Punch isn't going to be doing that much at neutral. Because Lix is obviously physically stupid. Oh, yeah, you see the Aselgore stats here. Um, has absolutely no Fizz Def. 40 defense you see in the s -Torse chat. Um, and then we have a Calc on Adamant Incineroar against Max, Max Slow King. It was like a roll, I think, to kill then. After the Hail and the Flare Blitz. So, yeah, who knows if it mattered. I don't know. Um... Be all right. So Steelix here will probably just go for Earthquake because you don't want to risk the Croak staying in and or like SDing on rocks or something. That would be uh, really bad. Uh, although that being said, like the Steelix does have is um, his sturdy intact, so I don't think Eternally would want to stay in anyway. Uh, or he could go here into like. Um, he doesn't have great switch into this now, though, because the Seismitoad took such a big hit. He, yeah, so he actually doesn't have a switch into Steelix, really, which is funny. So he might just stay in and get Chip on this with Drain Punch, because that'll help Haunter clean late game, because I'm pretty sure Shadow Ball to, like, a standard Licks does, like, 50-ish. Uh, I see Drain Punch crit. That sucks. And um, Earthquake comes out. Yeah. Wait, what the hell? <laughs> Does that? That's, like, no attack Steelix. <laughs> I'm surprised, like... A lot of licks now, they run adamant with attack because it helps you get rocks up against Zatu, or at least, like, it, it can't really switch in for free that well because it takes, like, 40 from Heavy Slam then. Or a lot of times you could even see Curse uh, to ensure rocks go up on Zatu, but Zatu's not as good as what it was in Sun Moon now that there's so many other defogging options, so maybe people are going to start going back to, like, Spadef licks, which is what this has to be because there's no way Earthquake, or Croak should live Earthquake at all. <laughs> Yeah, that's a piss weak Steelix. Uh, but yeah, now he's obviously eternally just going to click uh, Drain Punch again. There's no reason to do anything else. And ICT, I feel like, is just going to sack this. But that makes Whimsicott such a big threat for Eternally. And he looks to be in a great position right now. Um, if he plays this the end game well, I think he should win. Um, but I, I, it's not over because... Um, if, like, ICT doesn't have great switch-ins to Vanillix, like, I'm pretty sure Embor can only, or, I mean, Incineroar might only be able to switch in once more uh, with the spike up. So, at least ICT has that going for him. Or he's got the Togetamaru, I don't know what I'm talking about. Togetamaru is, like, a perfect switch into to, uh, to Vanillix, unless you get caught by HP ground. Um, yeah, if you get caught by, if, if the Togetamaru gets caught by HP ground, it's a problem. Otherwise, like, obviously the Vanillix is still checked fairly well. So... We see a Blizzard come out here, Sucker Punch for damage on the Vanillix. Now you're just going to go into Incineroar or into um, Togetamaru. I agree with Incineroar because Togetamaru just invites in the, uh, or the, the Rotom for no reason. So here with the Incineroar out, you could just click um, Flare Blitz because it doesn't have any real good switch-ins. Like I said, uh, chipping at the Embor is nice anyway, so you're probably just going to Flare Blitz here. Yep, good damage. And now... Um, yeah, things don't look very good for ICT. I guess he's going to sack the Incineroar, maybe. I would probably just sack the... I'd actually sack the Seismitoad if Incineroar could still live a Scarf Blizzard. Um, but he just sacks it. Uh, if Yeah, if Incineroar could live Scarf Blizzard, then I would have I would have kept it. Otherwise, because I don't really see... Um, I don't see Ro or, uh, the Seismitoad doing anything this game, to be honest. Uh, so now Eternally is just going to Moonblast because uh, it's pretty much going to kill something. I'm not for sure, or I'm not positive if the vanilla or if the Vanillix will die to um, to Moonblast from 61. Uh, we also don't know what this Whimsicott is. If it's Specs, it definitely will die. If it's like Pixie Plate or Orb, it might be a roll to die to Moonblast. So he goes Rotom. We'll see what kind of Whimsicott this is. It doesn't do that much. Um, it, yeah, so it is Life Orb, so it's not Specs. That, that's a good thing for ICT, because if it was Specs, I'm pretty sure the game would have been over. Uh, doesn't get the roll on the Rotom, but gets another special attack drop, which actually sucks in, in a way for ICT, because if he was able to get off a big chunk of damage on the Whimsicott, it would have been in range of, um, 
of it could get in range of sucker punch from Embor, and then Embor would actually just win because it could sucker punch the Haunter and then uh, superpower Seismitoad Flare Blitz to Getamaru. Uh, if to Getamaru is faster, but a lot of times like they just run full on uh, Spadef and HP, so I don't even know if it would. Uh, I don't even know if it would KO then. Or I, I'm sorry, I don't even know if to get him or if um, Embor would outspeed or not. I'm actually not positive about that. I have to check the speed tiers. Uh, but yeah, we just see the sack of the Rotom here, so things look good for Eternally. ICT has to go into Embor, and now uh, I I think there's a couple plays here. I think if Eternally, so and I don't know off the top of my head. It depends on Calcs from Haunter and from Whimsicott to Vanillux. So if Vanillux or if Vanillux dies to those moves, you could sack to get a Maru, go into Whimsicott, click Moonblast. And that would ensure the game because then if he goes, like he can't switch into Vanillux um, and then Haunter would, or like he can't switch into Vanillux so he has to sack. Uh, and then the 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 Vanillux would kill the Whimsicott but then Haunter would win because Haunters should be Scarf. But if if those moves don't kill or if they're rolls, then you have to, then it definitely becomes a little bit more difficult. So we see Spiky Shield getting some good chip off on Embor. But yeah, so like for example, if Sludge Bomb or Sludge Wave doesn't kill the um, the Vanillux, then the set of plays that I just said actually doesn't work. So they're obviously calcing this as as it's happening. But yeah, um, if if I wasn't watching a replay that Doc or a replay of this recording that Doc sent me, I'd probably try and calc these right now. <laughs> Because it helped a little bit, but I guess we'll see how it plays out. If I had to assume, I'm pretty sure like the Moonblast from Whimsicott and like Sludge Bomb slash Sludge Wave from Haunter probably do both do around what Vanillix is at. But if they're not guaranteed Okos, you don't want to go that set of plays that I was talking about. Because then you definitely want it to get a Mario to eat a hit from the Vanillix. Um, but yeah, I think Eternally here. So if, if like Sludge Bomb doesn't kill the Vanillix, you probably sack Haunter, maybe. But I'm not positive about that. I feel like Whimsicott is the one mon that you definitely can't sack because that's like your best uh, way to win the game is because when Vanillix, or I mean, I'm sorry, when Whimsicott comes in on the Embor after it gets a kill, it pretty much, it will get a kill itself pretty much. So I think, all right, so we're taking a long time here. Uh, ICT's test saying test. Eternally's taking his time. Um... Yeah, Eternally, I'll say Eternally had a pretty good matchup just because ICT didn't have much f at all for Croak, and uh, he had the, the to get a Maru for the Vanillux. Um, yeah, this this Embor was the real threat that ICT had for the for uh, Eternally, and it has definitely put in work for sure. Um, it sucks the crit on the Cobra Berry Slow King sucked. We don't we won't know for sure if that mattered. I guess. Um, but yeah. Uh, and you suspect going on right now too, guys, for Sneasel. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence. Sneasel's super good, but um, I don't know if it's ban worthy. Um, I guess when it comes down to it, people are people don't like pursuit like the amount of things it could pursue to like help other teammates like Zangoose and stuff. But like, I don't know. Just because it could pursuit trap stuff that are that's pursuit weak, I don't know if that's good enough reason. Uh, to ban it like of course it also has and on top of pursuit it has like an insane uh like insane stab combination knockoffs amazing um so yeah it's, it's obviously more than just pursuit but that's like the one of the main things it boils down to and i don't know personally if it's that good where it needs to be banned especially because it's rocks week it can't come in on shit hardly at all so um but yeah, that's where I stand on the Sneasel thing after we see Haunter get sacked. So I'm assuming that the that Eternally Calc in the in the poison move, uh, like Sludge Bomb, did not KO the Vanillix, which is why he sacked the Haunter. Uh, if if uh, Haunter was able to KO Vanillix with Sludge Bomb, then I don't agree with the play that he made there. Um, yeah, but now he goes to get a Maru. Uh, and also be, also be aware here, right? Embor's in range of one round of hail. So that's another thing to keep to, to think about. So like if hmm, I'm trying to think here how this would play out. So I actually I'm pretty sure Eternally just choked by going uh, to get a Maru. I I don't get why he went to get a Maru because I think if he went Whimsicott. So listen to this set of plays that I'm going to say. So if he goes Whimsicott right here and Moon Blasts, uh, ICT's forced into Vanillix. Even if it doesn't kill, then um, ICT has to Blizzard. So Eternally could sack the. Um, could sack the Whimsicott, then Eternally goes back, or then uh, 
Eternally goes to Gatamaru and wins the game. Because um, ICT would be forced into the Embor and then it would die to Hail. Or he has to stay in with the Vanillux and just die to a Zing Zap. So either way, I think it would have I think Eternally would have won then. So if he goes Whimsicott, right? Yeah, so this is where he choked. Yeah, because he could just switch it on Spiky Shield. So if Eternally went Whimsicott first and Moonblasted, if Vanillix was at like 10% or whatever, you just sack the you sack the Whimsicott and then go to Gatamaru and win. Because you Zing Zap the Vanillix and then the Embor dies the next turn to to uh, Hail, and you could have just clicked Spiky Shield on that. So I definitely think that yeah, Eternally just choked away the game. Um, it could still like he still could win, but it's gonna come down maybe to some sort of 50-50. I'm not sure. Um, one of the 50-50s just happened on the um, on the spiky shield on the Embor. That was one of the 50-50s that Eternally got wrong, and I'm trying to think. But now ICT just HP grounds, and I don't know if Whimsicott takes two after rocks because. Or I'm sorry, after Spike, because it has to take Spike and Hail, and it's already pretty low. So, I mean, I know it's a resisted hidden power, so... But I don't remember exactly what the Whimsicott was at. I Actually, like, if if um, Whimsicott lives... If Whimsicott lives to HP grounds, I guess you should switch here. Because as soon as Together Morrow takes an HP ground, you lose to Blizzard spam. So that, yeah, I don't, like... I don't know. And they're talking about this in they're talking about this in um, in the Smog Torch chat. So yes, yeah, Snag is saying that because Sadurts, my man Sadurts, right, saying if he went Whimsicott, then he win for sure. And Snag says no, but actually, I no, he's wrong. If he went Whimsicott, he actually did win a hundred percent. Because yeah, and I'll explain it one more time because I was talking kind of fast. So you go Whimsicott, you force in Vanillix, and you Moon Blast it. Then you sack the sack the Whimsicott to Ice Move. Then you go to get a Maru and click Zing Zap, and then you automatically win. Because if he sacks the Embor, you still live in HP ground from full from the Vanillix, as you just see right now. So that definitely was, yeah, that was the choke on Eternally's part there. He goes Whimsicott now, uh, and we see the HP ground uh, do 17. So he could have actually also went hard Whimsicott, I think, and lived to HP grounds. But I don't know if he kills back with, uh, I don't know if he kills back with Moonblast. Like I said, that's the one calc I don't know for sure. Um, now we just uh, Moonblast the Embor, but now I'm pretty sure that ICT wins by clicking Blizzard twice. So yeah, really weird game, because Eternally played so well for the first like 15 turns, and then it just kind of went downhill from there. Like I said earlier, the one play that I also didn't agree with was sacking the Incineroar if it was able to live a Blizzard from, from I think it would have been coming in the next time on Spike at like 34-ish. If it could live a, a Scarf Blizzard from there, I definitely think the play was to sack the seismitoad there instead of the incineroar but all right so we see uh yeah defog with whimsicott uh pranks or defog there to try and maybe live a hit with togetamaru but i don't even i don't think this is gonna be able to take it from 21 <laughs> this thing actually has like it, it it's typing is what makes it a decent pivot but in terms of actual like stats it's pretty pretty bad um and yeah i don't think it's gonna be able to take this blizzard very well um Spiky shields. I mean, that does nothing because it hail. So, unless you could stall out blizzards. But yeah, and I don't even think that was real. And Eternally says GG choke. So he knows his choke too. Um, and once again, yeah. So the choke was if he would have went Whimsicott after the Haunter sack instead of to get a Mara, I'm pretty sure he won 100%. Um, if there's a, th something I'm missing in that, uh, try and explain it below in the comments. And maybe, um, yeah, if you saw it some other way then make sure you leave that down in the comments. Um, otherwise, kind of sucks that this was a really good game that kind of got uh, thrown away at the end because uh, up to that, like, sort of end game there, I thought it was played well by both players. So, but yeah, overall, still a fun game to watch. Vanilla showing why it's broken. Nice, nice busted Mon. Um, yeah, I think we're going to just stay here for a while. I think Doc uh, at the end is going to show us the uh, the score of this uh, game. I, I'm not sure what two teams these uh, these players are on, but I'm pretty sure he'll show us. And here you see Poe just in the chat asking uh, ICT if you sucker punch Embor, which uh, I'd say 100% he should be. Like normally, like with the sort of like breaking sets like that, you're gonna be a f uh, Flare Blitz superpower, Wild Charge sucker. I don't see why you wouldn't be sucker. Um, it makes you so much harder to revenge kill. Um, 
Yeah, I think they're talking about the choke now. But yeah, like, the best, um... The best, uh... The best, like, offensive checks to Embor, a lot of them will die to Sucker Punch. So, like, you kind of need it, to be honest. Uh, so we see here the Cryos uh, win the game. That's ICT's team. He beats Eternally. So Cryos are up 2-0 on the week. Um, and yeah, I guess that's we're going to do it here for us, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, Ultra Balls out. Peace.